Simon, uh, on the Democratic yes. side, uh, no one's bothering to mention it, but there is a human being uh, running against <laughs> Joe Biden. And that human being, who's a member of Congress, Dean Phillips, got, so far, has 2.8% of the vote. That is 10% of the vote uh, that uh, Nikki Haley uh, has gotten. Nikki Haley is at 28% as of right now, flirting with 30%. And so you, when you put Joe Biden up against an actual human being in the Democratic Party, that human being can get all of 2.8% versus Donald Trump, who, when he goes against a, a, a human being in the Republican <laughs> primary, uh, loses 30% and in previous uh, uh, primaries, 40%. And the question tonight that we don't know, because there's no exit polls, you know, congr right. congratulations, exit poll business. They're doing nothing <laughs> tonight. So the only question that matters on the Republican side uh, of that primary is how many of those Nikki Haley voters will not vote for Donald Trump in November? And we have no uh, exit polling information to answer that question. Yeah, I mean, as you've mentioned, Lawrence, and we've talked in this show, I mean, one of the most remarkable statistics that we've seen so far in the election is these Haley voters in the three early states' willingness to not just not vote for Trump, but to vote for Biden. I mean, it's a big consequential event. But I will just say that if Trump got 60 percent in South Carolina and it was a romp and a blowout and is getting in the mid-60s here tonight and it's a big win, then Joe Biden getting 80 percent is a really big win, a really good night for Joe Biden. And, and I think that this idea that somehow this uncommitted movement would somehow alter the Democratic Party's trajectory, I think, hasn't happened tonight. I mean, remember that, you know, Barack Obama in just in 2012, when he was running for re-election, the uncommitted got 11 percent of the vote. Um, it's going to be probably 14, 15 tonight, really not a huge difference. And uh, Obama went on to win the general election against Michigan native Mitt Romney by nine points. And so I don't think things have really changed tonight in the Democratic Party. I don't think this was a good night for the uncommitted vote. It was a good night for Joe Biden. I will say that once again, and we don't have a lot of polling in Michigan, but the polls that were done in February had Trump above, you know, winning by 50 points or more. He's winning tonight by high 30s, low 40s. So once again, you know, based on public polling, Donald Trump is underperforming the public polls that are available to us, as he's done in the three early states uh, earlier this this election cycle. So what we've seen uh, since 1968, which is one of the fir first times we ever saw it, uh, yeah. when an incumbent president was up for re-election and someone within that party challenged the incumbent president, the worst yeah. thing that can happen for the incumbent president is that that challenger, that human being, get votes. Uh, that's what Lyndon Johnson saw in New Hampshire. Gene McCarthy got 42 percent of the vote. And Lyndon Johnson dropped out of the presidential race, yeah. not because he thought Gene McCarthy could beat him to the nomination. He was sure he would get the nomination at the uh, convention in Chicago, because that's where it was really going to be decided. It wasn't going to be decided by primaries. But the signal Lyndon Johnson got from that New Hampshire vote was, I can't win in November. This is too much weakness within my own party for me to win in November. Uh, and, and that's why, why he dropped out. When, when you look at this vote on uncommitted, which, which is one that yeah. I fully respect strategically of the people who want to cast yeah. to, to deliver Agreed. this expression of this is, a, this is based on a policy that we care about. We think the president is failing us on this one policy yeah. and only on this one policy, on no yeah. other policy. Um, this is not a vote for a person. They could have put up a candidate. They could have gone to right. Dean Phillips. Dean Phillips says he wants a ceasefire. Right. He said in December he wants a ceasefire. They mm -hmm. refused, refused to vote for Dean Phillips, and they cast a vote that says to the president, we're not with you tonight. That's all that vote says. We are uncommitted tonight. And what I've been hearing uh, from the, uh, certainly from the politicians who've been leading that movement uh, in Michigan is none of them are saying they won't be with Joe Biden in November against Donald Trump. Yeah, and it's, we also have to be a little bit careful tonight in not exaggerating the role of a delegate or two here. I mean, I've helped run the delegate operations on the floor of Democratic conventions, and having a delegate or two is, you know, not a significant achievement. I mean, many times during presidential primaries that, a, you know, a cause or a candidate will pick up a few delegates here or there, you know, because there became a, a question of how much energy 
should the Biden campaign really put into this to deny the 15 percent? And they've made a decision that they could handle, you know, there being this kind of opposition of a delegate or two at the Democratic convention, given that there are thousands of delegates. Right? And so, you know, the, I, I think it's just very important to recognize that to not exaggerate on our side the significance of what's happened tonight. I mean, I think obviously I also just want to say for the record that Joe Biden has been for a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. He actually negotiated a ceasefire. He actually is trying to negotiate a ceasefire right now. I mean, you can and if you look at, you know, I just looked at the Economist YouGov poll from last week among Democrats, Biden's approval on foreign policy is in the, is in the upper 70s. His disapproval is in the low 20s. The party is with him on what he's doing. I mean, you can be for a ceasefire and still be for Joe Biden, you know, backing Joe Biden and what he's doing in the Middle East. This is an important discussion we're having in the family. We're not all together on this. And it's important that we air this out and continue the respectful debate inside the family. It's a tough issue. But I think this notion that there is some kind of huge backlash against Biden on this issue, I think, has been disproven tonight, actually not proven in my view. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I want to do both. I want I want to give that movement the yeah. strategic respect it deserves, especially including yeah. the decision not to put up a candidate, the decision to say, uh, we simply want to deliver this message at the ballot box. We're going to actively go out and vote and we're going to yeah. vote for a blank. We're going to do that as a way of expressing ourselves, which is much I, I don't want to say weaker, but it is a softer objection than going out there the way voters went out there for Gene McCarthy in 1968, because those voters were 100 percent against Lyndon Johnson when they cast that vote. And there was no way or, in the world they were going to vote for Lyndon Johnson in November. Right. Or Ted Kennedy uh, in, in 1980 mm -hmm. or some of the Haley yes. voters in this election. Right. It's, you, it's important, the distinction you're drawing here, which is that th this isn't there isn't an opposition movement of significance inside the Democratic Party. And I think this is, we can have a respectful debate. We don't have to agree on everything as Democrats. That's what a democracy is all about. This is a healthy debate we're having, as long as it stays respectful and we stay on the same team. And I think that, you know, it is, to your point, I, I, I take your point, Lawrence, right, that this was a, a thoughtful and serious way of addressing concerns about the Biden presidency. But I also think that I'm I'm proud of the president tonight. I think this was a very big win for him. And I don't think it really alters the trajectory of the Democratic primary in any way. But we'll see. Right. We've got a long way to go. Elections to come. Uh, and I'll be back here with you many, many times in the coming <laughs> months, you know, digesting what's going on. But I think that I, I go back to this basic reality of where we are. Since so, Dobbs in 2022, mm -hmm. right, Democrats keep overperforming, Republicans keep struggling, and it's why I'm, I'm so optimistic about what's going to happen this fall.